Now, on the word move, we'll gather round for a further lecture on unarmed combat. All right. Up you go. Gather round the circle. Along. Pay attention, everybody. Ah. Are you volunteering to be attacker again, Jones? Well, we've got to do something, haven't we, sir? I mean, we haven't got any rifles yet, have we, sir? Uh, yes, Jones. Yes, sir. Well, now, last night, we dealt with the countermeasures to be taken against an assailant with a dagger. And it, just, just, just a moment. <laughs> in view of last night's incident, I think we'd better dispense with this. Yes, sir. I think that's probably very wise, sir. Yes. Use that one. May we? Sure. Now. <laughs> Now, having taken the blow under the knife on the left forearm, you recall the next move is to twist the hand and grasp the assailant by the wrist. So, that's right, isn't it, Sergeant? Yes, that's right, sir. That's as far as we got before the doctor arrived. Right. <laughs> now, the next thing is to knock out our opponent. Now, this can either be done with the edge of the hand against the throat, the knee in the groin, or jab two fingers in his eyes. <laughs> Stand behind him, Wilson, in case right. he falls backwards. All right, gents, all right. It's all right, it's all right, Sergeant. I shan't fall over. I won yesterday, didn't I? <laughs> this uh, jumping in the eyes business. What happens if he's wearing specs? Like him? That's a good question. But the chaps in Whitehall who wrote this manual had fortunately thought of that. And they've come up with a very smart alternative. They recommend that you shove the index and second fingers up the assailant's nostril. <laughs> now, it's not pleasant business, but this is war. <laughs> and, and what do you do uh, if he's wearing a gas mask? Ah. Well, that's a very good question. Isn't it, Sergeant? Yes, indeed it is, sir. It's a very good question. Yes. What do we do if he's wearing a service respirator? <laughs> Must get used to calling these things by the proper name, Fraser. Service respirator. Anything in the manual? No, nothing in here at all, sir. Nothing. Ah, well, there you are, you see. Fraser has come up with a question which even the Whitehall Johnnies had not considered. But, of course, they are not frontline fighting troops like we are. So what do we do? I'll tell you what we do. We improvise. Put on your gas mask, Corporal. Uh, service yes, respirator, sir. Quite right, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and subject to human frailties and weaknesses, just like any of us. Yes, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> if you mind, do you mind holding that, please? Yes, of course. Corporal, <laughs> this is supposed to be in a state of instant readiness. Yeah, well, they're, they're cat pieces for Mrs. Forster's cat, you see. She helps me count the coupons in the evening, so I see her cat brush. <laughs> 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 now, we can't put our fingers in his eyes or up his nostril. <laughs> <laughs> Which is presumably why you asked the question, Fred. <laughs> so, what are we to do? Any suggestions? Breathe on his window. <laughs> Seem to work. Ah, oh, well, you blew. You should have heard. I see. What do you get, Abigail, son? Well, I think it's the celluloid material, sir. You see, it doesn't uh, steam up. It's getting steamed up in here, all right. <laughs> yes, that's the answer, sir. You just hold him until he gets steamed up. Possibly. <laughs> ah, I have it. We cut off the air supply. Place the palm of the hand against the air intake. Or, in the case of the service respirator, of course, Grasp the tube and squeeze it. <laughs> now you know as well as I do that however tough and big a fighter is, be he Nazi stormtrooper, SS, or just plain Fritz, he cannot survive long without an air supply. This makes. Service respirator, sir. Get it off! Well, get it off. <laughs>